Hi, my name is Cindy Stoner, and I am here to walk you through how to think about your training roadmap. First, let's talk about why you need one in the first place. High-performing organizations have a few things in common when it comes to implementing business solutions. One is they always think of it as an initiative, not just a software installation. They know that ongoing change is a part of every initiative, so they plan for it. It is an ongoing process as the software in the business evolves. The training system they put in place is central to that preparation. With software updates, new features and functionality, and changes to the organization and its objectives, your training system needs to be both thorough and flexible. The Training Readiness Roadmap is designed to help. We have a very specific way that we think about training. It incorporates best practices from our HPO customers and leading experts in the learning and development field. In the example that follows, we'll be looking at an initial training rollout, but the process applies anytime there's a significant change that impacts the initiative. So let's jump in. Our learning methodology revolves around the five moments of need. This theory states that there are five times someone will need or want to learn something. The first two, when learning something for the first time and wanting to learn more, are part of what is called formal instruction or training. The last three happen during the flow of work, which is often referred to as workflow learning or performance support. Our learning methodology starts with the e-learning component. This could be a full course, or maybe just a video or two if it's a single concept. You will always want to train your managers first so that they can be available to answer their employees' questions when the time comes. Then you'll want to view their progress and reinforce as necessary. If you have an LMS system, then you will be able to view reports at a click of a button. Then you'll want to have the live training component. This can be in person or over the web, but either way, you'll want to cover the delta, the parts of the training that weren't covered in the e-learning topics. This is where many customers cover their company process training. We recommend leaving around 60% of the time for questions and practice. Being able to ask questions or practice what they have learned with a subject matter expert in the room is extremely helpful. They have a higher chance of leaving the room with a sense of independence and an ability to do their job. Don't forget to assign some type of activity in the software so you know that they can use it. You will want to follow up with them to make sure that they have completed the assignment correctly and reinforce if necessary. At this point, your employees should be entering into the stage of performance support. With performance support, the goal is to give your employees the ability to find answers quickly to not disrupt their flow of work. This gives them the ability to not just remember what they have learned in their initial training, but it allows them to transfer that knowledge to their everyday work much faster than only using traditional training methods. This process will repeat each time there's a major change in software or in the organization and will become what we call your training roadmap. Now that we have gone over our methodology, let's go over a few key points to consider. First, who will deliver training? In many companies, this will be the members of the core team, but you may have trainers or outside contractors. Whichever way you go, you'll want to make sure that your trainers are up to speed on how the software works and how your company will use it. Who's receiving training? Think of the roles, regions, or departments that need to be trained on the system. Will they be trained in the same way on the same topics, or will there be differences? What type of training are needed? As we stated in our methodology, we highly recommend having a mixed training plan, which includes e-learning courses, live training sessions, as well as a performance support tool. However, you still need to think about what that looks like. What will be included in the e-learning? What will you include in the live training? What activities will you give them to complete during the session and after? What materials are needed? Do you have a learning management system to house your e-learning content? What decks do you need to create for the live training? Do you need to create any additional content like videos, quick cards, or FAQs? And do you have a performance support tool that you can use and what needs to be in it? Finally, how will you support the team? Who will your users go to when they have questions? And how will you train new hires after your initial training? We'll be diving deeper into all of these concepts as we start the training readiness program. But if you have any questions about training, performance support, or anything else that we covered, please let us know. Thank you.